wrote that to go straight to a press conference in Geneva where the UN Special Envoy for Syria, Stefan de Mistura, is addressing the media. Let's listen in. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we had now uh, our seventh meeting of the task force on, uh, on uh, humanitarian access. We've been working for two months nearly and April was supposed to be our best month. It's not looking so, so far. Uh, I am uh, disappointed. Uh, disheartened of what we achieved over the last week. We have a new procedure now saying that after seven days we should get a uh, permission to go to a place and then another three days we should have the clearance, final clearance to actually go. Now, according to that uh, procedure, we had five convoys ready to go the last four days. All of the five convoys could not go. 287,000 people therefore did not get the relief in hard to reach areas or in besieged areas. What happened? areas. What happened? Well, in the areas of uh, Rastan, At-Tal, uh, Bludan, and Kafirbatna, which, has been a, which is a besieged area, the final clearance letter did not arrive on the eve of the convoys leaving. 50,000 people in Assas did not either get the supplies that they were supposed to get. In this case, it was because our partner, Sark, the Syrian Arab Red Crescent, was not allowed to operate of late by the armed opposition group in Assas. Two uh, places we were able to go to, Termala and Afrin, some uh, 45,000 people did get relief there. We'll come up now to 446,000 people in hard to reach and besieged areas since the beginning of the year. But it's not getting better and better. It's actually slowing down. This means that uh, our message was very clear. To those who can influence the government, Government has to live up to its promises, up to the new procedures, has to allow us to help people. Uh, needs will be uh, rising again rapidly if we're not allowed and able to go as we are supposed to. We're also now entering into the intensive phase of the big vaccination campaign. There are problems in many places in going as planned, uh, the appeal to the government and to the armed opposition groups do not stop our volunteers and our health workers that are to vaccinate millions of children for uh, epidemic disease. The one positive uh, uh, thing that we are hoping to do in the very near future is a very major evacuation of wounded, sick and their uh, relatives from the four towns which are uh, Madaya, Sabadani and Fua and Kefraya. Altogether it could be up to 500 people it's one of the biggest medical evacuations that have been planned. We hope it to happen. Because it will, go, it will happen from places where people have recently bled to death, died to totally unnecessary because there was not medical evacuations. Medical evacuations should uh, be uh, happening as a routine 
It is not. Medical assessment should be a routine. It is not. Medical assistance should happen as a routine. It is not. Actually, the whole um, issue in these four towns agreement of tit for tat, we cannot, we're not uh, able to evacuate people with in grave danger from one town or area because there is not uh, a, a green light to evacuate a similar number of people from the other towns at the exact same t t time is killing people. It has to be discontinued by the parties that are, uh, have agreed to the four towns agreement as to other uh, local agreements. We're hopeful that that will happen. Any questions? Thank you, sir. We'll take a few questions. Yes. And, uh, France 24. Yeah. Uh, Catherine for France 24. Um, sir, you just said that in fact um, the process is slowing down on the humanitarian aspect. Uh, how do you explain that? Because apparently what you told us is that all the parties in the field are in fact blocking the process now. Are all the parties involved in that blockage or only certain, certain areas? or just the government or just certain armed groups? Could you explain us a bit? No, it's, it's, it's both uh, sides uh, that are not cooperating, but certainly when 15 out of the 18 besieged areas are besieged by the government or their allied forces, it, 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 most of these uh, issues are related to the government. When four out of the five convoys that were not allowed to go over the last days were not given facilitation letter by the government and the other one was because an armed, uh, some of the armed opposition groups are not allowing SARC to operate in the north it is mainly the government but not exclusively so we were giving homework to the members of the uh, task force to go to both sides uh, in this conflict, or all sides in this conflict. Next question, please. Tom Miles from Reuters. Thanks very much. Uh, sorry, I missed the beginning of your remarks, so I uh, apologize if I covered this, but can you say what's happened to the detainees' situation? There seemed to be a kind of... Um, gathering steam for some kind of action on that. You initially said that it wasn't in your remit, then Mr. De Mistura seemed to suggest that he's put it back into your remit, um, and then we heard that there might be plans afoot uh, to do something specific, but it uh, seems to have gone quiet. Where are we? Thanks. It, it is not a, a, an issue that the, the Task Force on Humanitarian Access is dealing actively with. It is, however, an issue that has been raised by many of the, the members, and it is the ambition of the special envoy to get progress on the issue of detainees as part of the peace effort and the humanitarian effort uh, originating here in Geneva, and he will be working with many humanitarian partners to that effect and with governments who can influence the armed groups. So yes, it's, it's still the ambition. Thank you, next question. Well, we've been listening in to Jan Egerland, the uh, special advisor to Stefan de Mistura, uh, who's the special envoy to Syria. He's been laying out um, some of the discussions being held by the humanitarian group to try and gain access to hard to reach areas. Uh, Egerland mentioned that there were nearly half a million people, 446,000 in Syria, who are still in hard to reach areas due to uh, siege tactics. And that's also major evacuation plans for medically injured people were underway in the towns of Madaya, Zabadani, Fua, and Kafli. And of course, you remember those towns were very much in the news a few months ago because they were being besieged by Syrian uh, regime forces.